Hello, my name is David Bonney and I'm the Director of Library Services for the City of San Leandro. Today we're going to tour our library and learn some of the services that we offer to the public. Rather than speak to you for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to have the librarians and staff that directly provide those services talk to you and tell you exactly what it is they do for our residents. Hopefully you'll be able to see the passion they bring to their jobs. But first, I'd like to put the library into a bit of historical context for you. The library has always been important to San Leandrans. It was officially established in 1906, but its origins in town predate even that. Local citizens actually rallied together in the late 19th century to create a free lending library. Soon, however, that wasn't enough for San Leandrans. Residents recognized the need for a true public library, and a city department was created in 1906. The first library building was constructed with the help of a generous land grant from the Callan family and a construction grant from the Carnegie Foundation. That building opened in 1909 and served as the city's main library until the late 1950s. A bond issue was passed by residents eager for enhanced library services, and that allowed the city council to authorize a beautiful, modern building, as well as creating a branch library system. The new main opened in 1960. The building was a modern marvel and certain generations of San Leandro school children and adult residents. But it too became outmoded, particularly as the digital age dawned in California. When the building was designed, even electric typewriters didn't exist, let alone banks of computers. In the 1990s, it was clear that something had to be done. No one wanted to completely abandon the 1960s building and its well-used meeting rooms, but there was simply not enough space or power in the building. Finally, after the Loma Prieta earthquake, the city council decided something had to be done and funds were committed to retrofit and expand the main library. That project grew a bit in scope as time went on, but ultimately a state-of-the-art facility was completed and the library reopened in the year 2000, just in time for the new millennium. Today, San Leandro is blessed with a modern and highly used library system. 60 to 70,000 people visit the main library every month. Another 10,000 people visit Manor Branch and, in spite of drastic reductions in hours, several thousand more people visit the Mulford Marina and South Branch libraries as well. Add in those folks who use the library's meeting rooms, and you have well over 80,000 people who visit a library facility every month. That means upwards of one million visitors a year to a San Leandro library facility, an astonishing number for a city of just over 80,000 people. So, with that information, I'd like to introduce you to the fine staff of the San Leandro Public Library. We're going to begin with some of the nuts and bolts of the library operation, namely circulation. I'm Teresa Mallon, Support Services Manager at the San Leandro Public Library. Information Services is one of the departments that I'm responsible for. I also oversee the Circulation Department, library facilities, and library budget. The circulation desk is the first desk you'll see when entering the main library. It is the place to check out materials, return materials, and obtain a library card. The library circulates over 800,000 items a year. Most items can be borrowed for two weeks, with the exception of DVDs, videos, and Blu-rays, which can be checked out for two days. Items can be renewed online or over the phone. The circulation staff is always available to assist you, but the library also offers two self-check machines should you want to check out library material yourself. Library office assistants and volunteers ensure that all library materials are shelved correctly and in a timely manner. Items that need to be routed to Manor Mulford or South Branch Library are sorted here at the main library and delivered to the branch locations twice a week.
the library is interested in your safety as well as security of the building and we are pleased to have a staff of part-time security aides. Information services is a vital component of the library. We have a team of professional accredited librarians here to assist you. Information Services Department answers an average of 4,000 questions a month. Assistance is available in person, over the phone, as well as through instant messaging seven days a week. The reference collection includes over 3,000 print items spanning a wide variety of topics. In addition to print resources, the library offers a variety of electronic databases. These databases provide fast, easy access to online resources. They are available to library patrons 24-7 from any computer with internet access. The library also has 60 public computers available for use and Wi-Fi is available throughout the library portion of the building. The Electronic Learning Center has computers dedicated for creating and printing documents. Each of the 12 computers has special software to help improve your keyboarding skills as well as create resumes and cover letters. The library also offers a computer tutor program. It is a valuable and enriching free library program in which adult volunteers assist patrons for an hour at a time. Tutors teach students important computer literacy components such as basic computer skills, internet skills, using email and Facebook, and resume writing basics. Public meeting rooms of various sizes are also available. These spaces are used for city events, but are also available to rent for private use. Hi, I'm Therese Dunn and I'm the Senior Librarian in charge of Technical Services here at the Main Library. Um, in our department, we're in charge of collection development, acquisitions, and processing. Let me tell you a little bit about our collection. We're very proud of it. The San Leandro Library has our main library and three library branches. That includes reference books, fiction, nonfiction, and biographies. We also have a foreign language collection that includes Spanish, Vietnamese, and Chinese language books. We're proud to announce we have a new collection of ebooks and downloadable audiobooks. These are available through our library homepage at www.sanleandrolibrary.org. Our library also has an extensive media collection, more than most East Bay libraries. Our collection includes over 14,000 movies in DVD, Blu ray, and VHS formats. We also have a lot of music, over 9,000 CDs and cassettes. We also have 3,000 audiobooks on CD and cassettes. Collection development is a vital step in providing all the great materials that we offer. Here at the San Leandro Library, we are very proud of the variety and currency of all the resources and materials we have. Acquisitions is the process of obtaining books and other materials for your library. There are a variety of sources used to determine what's available for purchase, including bestsellers lists, trade journals, and catalogs. We also receive and fill a large number of patron requests. It is a priority of the San Leandro Library to have a budget that can provide a robust collection for the San Leandro's residents. Orders are placed with a variety of vendors and distributors to provide the speed and selection necessary to keep our collection current. We receive shipments of books and materials daily. Once the items arrive, they need to be made shelf ready. Titles need to be added to the catalog to make them findable and we need to add barcodes, labels, security, and covers. To see what's new at the library, check out the items in the new area on the first floor. Hi, my name is Lori Hitchcock. I'm an adult services librarian. Among my responsibilities are government documents and serials. Since about 1961, the San Leandro Library has been part of the Federal Depository Program. There are about 1,250 uh, depository libraries across the United States. We also receive documents that focus on health, education, history, economics, and citizenship. In total, we probably receive about 500 items, and they're worth probably between $10,000 and $20,000. And again, we receive these at no cost to the library. 
Examples of government documents include the bound copies of the Supreme Court decisions, the United States Code, the Federal Register and Congressional Record, the public papers of the President. We also receive things like study kits for citizenship, pamphlets from the national parks, the CIA fact book, which has wonderful information about the countries of the world. And then agencies sometimes put out special editions, such as Black Americans in Congress, Women in Congress, uh, the FBI Centennial History, and the Census Atlas of the United States. I also oversee the library's serials collection, which is also known as magazines and newspapers. Right now we're receiving about 340 titles, and that breaks down to 270 magazines, um, over 20 newspapers, and over 50 titles for children and teens. Um, the serials are processed daily, so we get them out to the public as soon as possible. And to keep the serials area um, neat and tidy, teen volunteers help us pull old and worn out magazines. In our compact storage area, we have magazines that date back to the 1880s. We also have a complete set of Time, Life, and Newsweek that date back to the 1930s. And we have National Geographics that date back to 1909. These uh, materials are primarily used by students who need original source documents for their assignments. We also have an extensive microfilm collection of newspapers that are mostly local newspapers. For example, we have the San Leandro Reporter that dates from 1879 to 1951. These newspapers are primarily people who are doing family history research and others who are doing local history research. And despite the digital age, people are still coming to the library to read newspapers and magazines, and last year we checked out about 5,500 serials. Hi, my name is Kelly Kiefer. I'm the Senior Librarian for Youth Services here at the San Leandro Main Library. When we think about children in libraries, we think about books and we think about story time. Miss Tina leads our very popular Babies and Toddlers Story Time, where she reads short books, sings lots of songs, does rhymes, and then brings out toys for the children to play with. Miss Kathleen and I lead Preschool Story Time, and our focus is a little bit different. With the preschoolers, we're working on kindergarten readiness. The stories we read focus on a letter of the alphabet or a concept like shapes and colors. After we read books, we lead the kids in a craft project where they have to cut and glue, which focuses on their fine motor skills. We also have volunteers from our community who are leading bilingual Spanish-English story time. This has been a great addition to our story time lineup. Beyond story times, we like to offer a variety of programs to our community to invite them into the library. Once a month, we host a family fun night where we recruit a top-notch entertainer to come in for a magic show, a puppet show, a live animal show. There's just been a wide variety and we have that once a month. On a weekly basis, we offer a very popular reading enrichment program called Pause to Read. We work with volunteers from Therapy Pets and they bring in their dogs who lay on their dog beds and listen to our kids read aloud. It's great reading practice and this is a favorite for everybody. Once a year, at the end of April, the library participates in Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, Day of the Child, Day of the Book. It's a bilingual family reading celebration. And of course, our biggest program of all is the library's summer reading program, where we encourage kids to keep reading all summer long to help prevent summer learning loss. Last year, we had more than 4,000 youth, from babies to toddlers up to elementary school to teenagers, participate in our 10-week program. They are rewarded for reading, and the whole summer culminates in an outdoor carnival in the library's parking lot, which is not to be missed. It's a San Leandro tradition. We welcome kids and families into the library every day of the week. During the day, our picture book and play table area is a hit with the zero to five crowd, while after school, our tables are filled with kids and families doing their homework, looking for materials for an assignment, or just stopping by to ask us for a reading recommendation. Behind the scenes, our library staff works hard to find the best in new books for youth, whether for reading for pleasure or to support an assignment. Our new bookshelf is often the first stop for most patrons. We also love matching up books and readers. You can find a wide variety of recommended reading lists at the library and on our website. In fact, our website really helps us to extend our reach out into the community for patrons who have computers at home. You can borrow ebooks, 
download audiobooks, watch animated children's books for free through our subscriptions to Tumble Books and Book Flicks. This is all 24 hours a day. And for those middle school students who might have procrastinated about their Greek mythology project, our online databases offer just the right authoritative information that teachers will appreciate. If you can't make it into the library for story time, no problem. You can watch us reading on YouTube or you can call our Dial a Story hotline for a new book each week. So whether you're coming into the library to see us or we're going out to see you, the library has something to offer for everyone. Hi, my name is Chris Selig and I'm a librarian at the San Leandro Main Library. Um, the main purpose of my job is coordinating all the teen services. And um, I see my most important job as promoting reading and library use among students in grades 6 to 12. First and foremost is our robust teen collection. We have a, a really nice selection of uh, popular and award-winning teen fiction, uh, a very diverse collection that really suits our community. In addition, we have the adult, juvenile, and teen nonfiction collections, which help our students with school assignments. And not only that, but our online databases, we have some that are specifically for students in middle school and high school. We also subscribe to Tutor.com, an online tutoring service with access to live tutors via instant messaging who assist children and teens with homework. Teen volunteers are a big part of the library. We recruit and train more than 350 teen volunteers a year. The community service clubs at the high school, such as Octagon, Key Club, Interact, California Scholarship Federation, and the Jefferson Service Club also provide large group of volunteers for our major events. Our book club, the Sneak Peek Reviewers Club, has a special honor. Our library is one of only 16 libraries in the country that received advance review copies of teen books. In exchange, members of my book club write reviews that go directly back to the publisher. And this year, we were the only library selected by School Library Journal magazine to have the teen's reviews published online. By submitting these reviews, we are earning money from School Library Journal to spend on the library's teen programs. Our after-school and special programs bring a lot of teens to the library. We offer about two to four programs per month for students in grades 6 to 12. Programs include the summer reading program, gaming, high school book club, cultural programs, craft programs, and friendly competitions. The library is a safe and productive place in the community to learn and have fun with friends. Hi, my name is Patty Malari and I've had the pleasure of working with the San Leandro Public Library since July 2007. Today I will talk to you about the San Leandro California History Room, the Casa Peralta, and the San Leandro Museum and Art Gallery. The stately San Leandro History Room is located on the second floor of the San Leandro Public Library. It houses an impressive collection of books and materials about California history and local history. The San Leandro History Room has a wonderful collection of black and white prints dating back to as late as the 1800s. The images are also available online on the historical database, the San Leandro Historical Photograph and Document Collection. The San Leandro History Room is open on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m., depending on staff availability. As San Leandro's historical house museum, Casa Peralta is a beloved landmark that serves as a window to San Leandro's rich history and culture. Descendants of the Peralta family lived inside this house. The Peralta family owned Rancho San Antonio, a land grant that stretched from present-day El Cerrito to San Leandro Creek. Traditional celebrations at the Casa Peralta include a day at the Casa, which is organized by the San Leandro Historical Society and is held every July and holidays at the Casa, which is held every December. Next door to the Casa Peralta stands the San Leandro Museum and Art Gallery. The beautiful museum houses a permanent exhibit that uncovers the rich history and culture of San Leandro and has served the community in various capacities. The museum has offered school tours for third and fourth grade students. 
The San Leandro Chamber of Commerce also begins its Leadership San Leandro training program every fall at the Museum in Casa Peralta. Additionally, the art gallery has served as a venue for local artists to showcase their works. Due to budget cuts, unfortunately, the San Leandro Museum and Art Gallery has been closed since 2010. Historical resources at the California History Room, the Casa Peralta, and the San Leandro Museum and Art Gallery offer a wealth of information on the past of this remarkable city and community. Hello, my name is Mary Lee Barr, and I'm a reference librarian here at the San Leandro Public Library. I have worked here for over 10 years. My major responsibilities working here at the library include serving at the information desk, coordinator for the adult services programming, the city's local history specialist, overseeing the history room liaison to the Friends of the San Leonardo Public Library, and the adult volunteer coordinator. I oversee over 90 volunteers who work in 14 different job positions for the general library operations. My role as volunteer coordinator is constant and ongoing from day-to-day -day interactions with volunteers to ensure that tasks, responsibilities, and operations are carried out correctly and are running smoothly. Many of our library volunteers have worked here for years, which says a lot of how rewarding our volunteers find it working here at the library. If you're watching this film and feel inspired to join my wonderful team of volunteers, please come to the library and fill out an application. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill Sherwood, Senior Librarian and Manager of the Manor Branch Library. I'm also the uh, manager of our digital branch, which includes our website, our informational databases, and our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, finally, I'm the staff liaison for the library to the Arts Council of San Leandro. Today we're here to talk about Manor Branch. This branch has served the Washington Manor neighborhood for decades, and since 2006 in this beautiful 9,300 square foot state-of-the-art facility. This is about four times the size of the old building. In this branch library, we've got 30 public access computers. We've got a Wi-Fi network. We've got a dedicated children's area, including an enclosed outdoor patio. We've got a quiet study and periodical reading area. A large program room, which we use for story time, special events, community meetings, over 37,000 books and other items, and we provide an array of exciting and educational programs for all ages. We have about 12,000 visitors a month, uh, 144,000 visitors a year. And all ages take advantage to the, of this branch, but we are particularly a gathering area for kids, for students. We have uh, seven public schools and three private schools right here in the area. In this last fiscal year, 10-11, we had 81 programs and almost 6,000 attendees. These programs ranged from a book discussion group for the adults that participated in our 2011 Big Read program to things like our Halloween extravaganza. Now at Manor, we rely on the help and hard work of a lot of volunteers. We have adult volunteers and teen volunteers. One of our regular adult volunteers, her name is Vi, she comes faithfully every Wednesday. She helps us uh, straighten up the shelves, keep them neat and in order. She helps us shelve books and other materials. She'll help pull items that patrons have requested and helps us discard uh, old materials to make way for the new. In this last year, 2011, we had over 100 teen volunteers and the vast majority will help us with our summer reading program. Recently, a young man uh, by the name of Angelo uh, came to volunteer here at Manor. He's a freshman at San Leandro High. He had 30 hours of required uh, volunteer service. Once he completed that service, he liked it so much that he decided to stay, and we're delighted to have him and all of the volunteers. Well, that's a very brief overview of Manor Branch Library, but I hope you'll come see us sometime. Thanks. Hello, my name is Hollis Lesser, and I manage both Mulford and South Branch libraries. Mulford and South Branch are vital neighborhood-friendly libraries for our community. They offer full library services at convenient locations. 
Mulford Branch, located near the marina, and South Branch, in the southeastern area of the city, are easily accessible by car or public transit, but many customers walk from their homes or school. Both libraries have an intimate atmosphere and offer individualized service to their devoted customers, which is especially important for kids and seniors. Many seniors rely on the branch libraries as a social outlet. Both branches participate in the Big Read and the Summer Reading Program. At the beginning of the school year, classes walk to the library for a tour, they make a bookmark and hear a story or two. Mulford circulates over 45,000 items a year. South Branch over 25,000 items a year. South Branch has an impressive Spanish and bilingual collection in adult and juvenile material. This addition to our collection has been very popular, especially with the children. Last year, Mulford Branch started a juvenile collection of Spanish and bilingual, which we plan on expanding each year. Hello, my name is Cinda Mariscal. I'm the coordinator for Project Literacy. Project Literacy is an adult literacy program for adult readers that want to increase their reading levels. We offer free and confidential services, one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We also offer all family services, which means we work with the entire family. We have 175 community volunteers and we serve over 200 adult learners. When we count family members impacted by the program, we reach over a thousand people annually. Volunteer tutors formulate a student-focused, personal approach to the learning style of their adult learner. Our learners increase literacy skills at his or her own pace. We provide services to and with five Head Start sites, one Even Start site, two women's shelters, one clinic, the Burke Academy Teen Parent Program, Cal State East Bay Children's Center, and two Early Head Start full day programs. We understand and we appreciate the fact that when we are servicing the parent, we are servicing the whole family. Trivia B is our annual fundraiser. San Leandro comes together for this event of dinner, trivia competition, prizes, and fun. But more importantly, all the proceeds go to literacy. Your involvement in Trivia B allows Project Literacy to continue providing adult and family literacy service to the community. Please join us for Trivia B 2012. We appreciate your involvement in this crucial community service. I'm Nancy Fong, Library Services Manager, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about library programming. The library is more than just a place where the community come to check out books and use a computer, but we're a community gathering place where people from the community can come to enjoy an author talk or hear a concert or see a play. Last year, despite budget cuts, our library was able to hold over 300 programs with attendance from about 30 to 3,000. Here you are going to see some examples of the library programming that we've done. We emphasize family programs and particularly multi-ethnic programs such as Lunar New Year, Black History Month, Mexican Fiestas, our Hawaiian and Portuguese concerts, and the annual Heritage Fair. Some of our, our programming is predicated upon grant funding, such as our Big Read, which is a big program sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts. Another program where we were able to get grant funding for is the Civil Liberties Program, sponsored by the State of California. And with this program, we were able to record the stories of Japanese-American interns at internment camps throughout the country. 
The programming we do as a library helps to build community, it brings friends and neighbors together, and it creates opportunities for added educational, literary, and cultural values for our residents. Well, there you have it. In a nutshell, that's what the San Leandro Library does and, and the services that we provide here for our residents. Like all city departments, the library has suffered a number of budget cuts over the last several years. I do believe that we've been able to continue with quality services uh, throughout that time, but there are some things on the horizon that the city council should be aware of uh, looking down the road. First is project literacy. Project literacy has never been funded by the general fund. We've always relied on state grants, uh, private foundation money, and of course fundraising. The Trivia Bee, for example, is an excellent fundraiser, but in no way covers the entire cost of project literacy. We've completely eliminated part-timers in, in that division of the library, have only one employee who recruits, trains, and supervises all those tutors and uh, uh, students that we have there. The San Leandro Museum and Art Gallery remains closed in the projected 12-13 budget. This will be the third year in a row that the museum has been shut. It means that the art gallery is not available for local artists to display their work. Perhaps more importantly, it means that we're unable to conduct tours of San Leandro history for our third and fourth grade children. They're losing out on the opportunity to learn about San Leandro's rich historical past. Library's material budget is also a cause for concern. In the past three years, we've reduced the materials budget $108,000, or 30 percent. The periodical budget in particular has been devastated, as it's been reduced $31,000, or 75 percent. It's critical that the library provide current, accurate, and relevant information to the public. A library can quickly become a depository of dead, useless materials if its collections aren't kept up to date. The technology budget is another area of major concern. The library department is totally automated. Everything we do, circulation, acquisitions, our catalogs, are dependent on our integrated library system. We've had an excellent vendor, but unfortunately, the useful life of our software is coming to an end. The vendor is no longer upgrading our software and has indicated that in the foreseeable future, they will no longer maintain it. It's critical that we begin to look towards a replacement system and to set aside funds for that eventuality. I'd like to close this presentation with a song. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. I'll leave that to the St. Felicitas School Choir. This song was written for the San Leandro Centennial and I believe represents why it's so important for the library to maintain local history as an archive for future generations.